What's up guys, Speed here, and today we're going to be talking about how Team Secret ran over OG. Not in both games, we're not going to look at both games, maybe I'll look at the other one in the future. But specifically, I want to look at the what I like to call the unsung hero, which is Puppy's performance on the Ventral Spirit. I mean, we see a very different starting iron build to get into it right off the bat. We're going to see him go very aggressive and tank a lot of damage as a position 5. And I really want to discuss why a lot of you guys are getting held back in your various roles. I really do want to try to give my opinion on dying in Dota and why it's important to learn how to not fear it because the, the earlier you learn how to do that, right, not fear death, the quicker you're going to learn the game of Dota 2, the better you're going to get. And so yeah, let's discuss it by following Puppy's Venge and watching how Secret can stomp OG in some of the plays that they make that you can use in your games as well. On top of that, of course, like and subscribe to help our channel grow. We post daily here, so if you guys could smash and destroy the like button or, uh, you know, uh, or some other verb, the like button, I would appreciate that. And finally, if you're a support player and you enjoy the content that you see here, me talking about secret dot puppy on his ventral spirit, this is not the only support content I make here on this earth. I also, on the GameLeak.com website, which you can sign up for in the link down below in the description down below, I, I recently made a lion course, an earth spear course, and an earth shaker course, Right, all talking about different heroes. The Earthshaker course was about crit, the Earth Spirit course was about Tim's, the line course was your boy Speed. I actually think I looked at one other player, but I forget who it was. Nonetheless, if you enjoy the support content I make on YouTube, sign up for GameLeap.com down below right now and I, you're not going to regret it. Alright, getting into the game, let's check out Puppy's starting item build and skill build. So he goes for the Wave of Terror, but most notably he starts Boots. Now the reason why I like this Boots here is he understands that his job in this lane is not necessarily to trade, but to harass and avoid death from this Orb of Enipango that is very likely to come out. That does end up happening, right? And, and that's pretty standard with Ion Shell from my experience and from what I've seen. Pangos landing with Dark Seers in the past have also done this. And the goal is to land a Swashbuckle with Orb of Venom and an Ion Shell and you deal a lot of damage. But because Puppy has boots, uh, well, I've actually seen this for a plethora of reasons, but because he has boots, he can actually run the offlaner down, especially when they're creep cunning. He can bully them super hard when someone is skipping the wave because he can attack move, attack move, attack move, and basically gets double the auto attacks off. So this build is just really cool in my opinion. On top of that though, if you are going to go the starting item build boots, you have to rush out other regen to start as well. You're going to see that puppy does hide his courier away because he doesn't want it to die, but the first items that he buys are six more tangos. But yeah, the cool strategy that you're going to see here is going to come into play in a second. With this boots, he's able to bully the Darkseer quite a bit, right? Getting, I would argue, double the right clicks in because 45 movement speed is not just like one right click, right? It's going to let you get uh, significantly more in. On top of that, this next sequence shows a really big priority in what supports are actually looking for in this bracket. As I said, he ships out the regen, ships out the sentry with the boots build. He's able to bully the Pangolier to a large extent which is going to create an XP lead, saps this melee creep, which is my favorite part of the clip. I can't stand when I see 2k, 3k MMR players just basically miss a creep for absolutely no reason. Like, they'll just not even sit in XP range in hard lanes, and it makes me go insane. But then following that, he even goes for an immediate sentry ward and finds the, the ward blocking their camps, which is overall just a fantastic sequence. Good bullying, popping regen, uh, just, just really great overall. On top of that, you're going to see with this boost advantage, he can hit the melee heroes over and over again, and that's exactly what he's going to try to do in this lane. Hit level 2 and set up Matumba Man. He's not sapping a lot of XP, because he understands if he doesn't sap a lot of XP, Matumba Man will have a very good game, and then he can leave the lane, which is his overall goal. Think about that, guys. This is the current meta from basically every single 5 that I've seen in this recent Pro Tournament. Give your laner a lot of XP. Let's click on the DK. Level 3 and 3 fourths. The Rubik. Level 1. Puppy. Level 2. Bloodseeker, level 3 and 3 fourths, and this is the strategy that they're using. In fact, I, I bet you it's going on the same side as OG. It is, right? This is a really good strategy right now, because what it allows them to do is basically actually make plays around the map. If you sap all the XP and then leave, you've ruined your safe laner's game. But now let's look at this next clip, and this is where I want to talk about dying. Guys, you have to play like Puppy, right here. He's committing his spells over and over and over again. He's running out of mana. This is a good thing. I want you guys to run out of mana more. Don't try to waste your spells, but, you know, use them in coordination with your teammates. And now, right, because he's stunned and wave of terror, he eats a tango. Really, really smart not to run all the way around there. Great movement by Puppy. Comes around, baits in the Darkseer, right? Great trading. Secures the kill. Unfortunately, 
Hey, it would have been a good play. Unfortunately, he dies to a neutral creep. What are you going to do? So it makes this whole sequence look bad. But at the end of the day, that would have been a first blood for the boys. Gotten him a significantly larger amount of items. Gotten him towards his tranquil boots and just a great start overall. On top of that, when he gets back to the lane here, pay attention to the things that he does. Number one, dying is not bad because you bring your safe laner items. All of a sudden, he, he can bring his Bloodseeker part of his phase boots, which helps him win the lane. He also has full resources. He also has a healing cell. Guys, this is how you win the lane. Go super aggressive as the five. Do not care about dying. Don't overextend. But once you've committed all your resources and you've traded well, hopefully at that point, you've won the lane. Usually what most fives do is they just kind of chill in the back. They're just like, ah, I hope my safe laner does well. And then when their safe laner missed like three CS, they're like, hmm, uh, this is the reason why I'm stuck. My safe laner keeps missing all the last hits and is getting bullied out of lane. But in all seriousness, they're usually the reason because they don't do anything. Look how aggressive Puppy is going here. Why? Because he understands Seven of the Darks here can't threaten him with any particular spells. So he's hit, move back, hit, move back. And because he has boots, the Pango can't close the gap. Just beautiful trading overall. And yeah, I'd love to make it more complex than this at this point in the game, but it really is just going to be him avoiding overextending, right? Doesn't want to run into a creep wave. But anytime he has an opportunity to poke at Seb, he does it, right? Every auto attack counts, and you can see that especially with the Bloodseeker. He's really playing around the fact that his Bloodseeker needs all the thirst movement speed he can get. And yeah, because of this slow harass, they're able to pick up a kill onto the Bloodseeker, and now this game is basically over. Well, I should say lane, but honestly, yeah, the game is kind of over, because now the Pangolier has no game at all. If we look at the net worth charts, Pangolier has 800 net worth, and is stuck at level 3.5 at 5 minutes, which is quite mediocre. On top of that, the Darkseer isn't doing that much better compared to the basically level 5 of Matuma Man. And honestly, guys, this is kind of how you win the laning stage right now. Buy a regen, buy effective items, and go aggressive. Sacrifice your game for the good of your carry, as Puppy is doing here, right? Does that kill do anything for Seb? Not really, right? That doesn't do that much. Because now he's dead, Matuma Man is going to get a full free wave of experience, he's going to come back, Matuma Man's going to have rupture, and he's going to die again. And this is how Dota works. If you want to get good at Dota, you have to look at all of your little decisions and add them together. That's how you perform. Now let's quickly talk about Vengeful Spirit as a hero. The main thing I do want to say about this hero is make sure you have some sort of mana regen at all times. You're going to see that when Puppy goes mid here, he gets the courier to deliver him a stick and a clarity. If you don't have stick and a clarity in mangoes, you're going to run out of mana on Venge. So make sure you do this. On top of that, you know, this is a good skill build to go. Two points in stun, one wave of terror, and then you'll take a value point in Vengeance Aura after that as well at level 4. The next thing that I like that he does here is that he sets up on Seb and he's pinging Matama Man to come over. You guys very often ask me in pubs, speed, you know, how do I get my course to do things? Well, you have to ping and say, hey, come kill this guy. Uh, I know, that might sound simple, but when I talk to a lot of my students and, and just people I talk to in general in Dota, they just don't do this. They don't say, hey man, come over, let's get a quick kill. No, like, it just doesn't happen. And because of that, they don't kill anyone. Just says, hey, Come over, Matama Man, and they get a free kill because of it. So just keep that in mind, guys. Make sure you're talking to your carries and letting them know what's happening. And now, finally, let's look at Puppy's positioning in this next fight. I mean, it's such a cool fight. The reason for this is because you can clearly tell that he is not worried about dying. Why? Why is it good for Puppy to run in and frontline as a Venge? This might seem like a psychotic play, but it actually makes sense here. The reason it makes sense here is his Quap is having a giga good game. So, the enemy team, if possible, wants to try to kill the Quap. If Puppy runs in the front, though, and just starts auto-attacking everyone, they can't go on the Quap because he provides the vision, right? Their only chance of killing Quap is if Midwin hits level 6 and sneaks up on Nisha. But if Puppy is constantly sitting in the front, it's very difficult for them to do this. On top of that, we're going to see another value play come out here from the secret duo. They're running together, and this is very advanced Dota, where basically they're just actually taking the jungle camps of the Alk, which is kind of funny within itself. Yes, they are no joke jungling the Alk stacks. They actually take the camps to get neutral items, which they do end up getting, and they take over the top side of the map. Does this seem safe, guys, by the way? Him pushing in top wave here. Yes, it does. Why? Because you see a hero mid, two bottom mid. The other two heroes are Chen and Alk. He can't get threatened by them, so he's taking the farm. This is what I love to see. A support identifying the open wave after the engagement has ended, right? He was fighting mid, they took the stacks in the jungle, there happened to be an open creep wave. Okay, fine, I'll take it. He's even looking for denies, which is within itself hilarious. It's just, 
It's genuinely hilarious. He's just trying to deny the owl. And now let's look at another case where Puppy once again initiates for his team. He walks in here so that Zion doesn't have to, and you're gonna see in the fact that the Dragonite basically solo carries the fight. So he just starts auto-attacking mid one. Obviously he can't kill him, but at the end of the day, they commit a lot of resources on the Puppy. He gets his stun off, gets all of his spells off, and has this illusion alive. And this is really the cool thing about the Venge. Even when you're dead, you're still providing your aura, you still can right-click people, and yeah, if you have a decent game, you can actually just fully zone out supports from the fight simply with your illusion. And hopefully you guys kind of can see the value of what I'm saying now. If your cores are having a good game, man up, frontline, and let them play it out, and because you provide vision with your hero, they're gonna have a god game. And remember guys, if you can't get the tome, because you have Yapsor on your team, who you know is gonna insta-yoink the tome, at any point possible, <laughs> which he has flying out on the courier right now, you know for a fact that you're going to have to take some farm. And this is the reality of Dota. Guys, their team is wrapping on bottom right now, right? They're wrapping on bottom, they got to pick off. He doesn't even need to be there. He can TP in worst case scenario. Now, could he make the play with his team? Absolutely. That's an option. But does he have to? No, he doesn't have to because he got his team off to such a good start by playing the way that he did that his sacrificial playstyle now comes back to actually give him farm. Because he gave them so much farm, he now can actually be greedy, right? So if you're greedy the entire game, you're actually often going to end up games with less farm because your teammates can't snowball, they can't fight. But if you sacrifice yourself early game, you can do what Puppy is doing here, which is simply taking the open creep wave. And yeah, the funny thing is he's actually keeping the lane back, which is an advanced strategy that I've seen um, the open AI do. Oh, quite a while ago, where basically they sit a position 5 or a position 4 in a lane, and they just deny the creeps. The reason for this is Alchemist is farming top jungle, so if Puppy instantly pushes it in, it would actually give the Alk the opportunity to farm a creep wave, which is good for the Alk's farming pattern. Puppy, on this case, actually just keeps the lane back, at least for a short period of time. He eventually does end up pushing it in after Nisha runs the Alk out of the lane, but at the end of the day, he kept the lane back when Alk had the potential to farm it, and I think that's a very advanced strategy people should be considering, because usually what people default to, especially supports, is push the lane as quick as possible, and that's not always viable. Now, because I don't want to run this video on for too much longer, I just want to give a lot of key information on what I think would make people be a better support player that they don't really consider. Uh, hopefully you guys actually have learned a lot about dying, positioning, movement, how to farm, uh, things like this from this replay. I know it can be hard in your pubs, but you gotta give it a shot or at least find some friends to play with, right? Pick one or the other. Try to communicate with your solo queue teammates or find some friends with to team with, right? So you can make calls and try to synergize with them and, you know, just be very aggressive as a support, right? Most supports are way too passive, but fight breaks out here. He goes for a swap onto the Pango to try to make him miss the stun. Unfortunately, <laughs> he swaps him into Yapsor, probably because Yapsor stole his tome. But now he goes in with the stun, kites out, only because his team isn't exactly in position yet. Now that they are, he's going to swap the Earthshaker under tower with the Rupture, which does damage. Really just a perfect swap overall. They secure the kill onto the Earthshaker. They shift over to the Darkseer, and of course, in typical puppy fashion, he's not backing down. It's a bad trade with the Pango there, but his team is in the vicinity, so he can make it. And by the way, I, I really do want to mention before we end up the video here, you're going to see his item build. Tranquils, Wand, Clarity, Bracer, Smoke of the Seat. These are the items you guys should be buying every single game as a support. Please stop buying mana boots on every hero. Are there heroes that can buy mana boots? Yes. Yes, like a Rubik. Because Rubik needs it, and he builds it into Aether Lens. But when I see a Vengeful Spirit buy mana boots, and then run around the map with 300 HP the entire game and zero movement speed, it just makes me extremely angry. Do you understand the value between Tranquil Boots and Clarities? And Wand, you have double the health because Tranquil Boots lets you regen, and you enter every fight with full health. You were significantly faster, which means you can be in position and avoid getting clipped by certain skills or certain right clicks. And of course you have the active from wand and a full bracer. So please just consider this item build instead of buying mana boots every game, buy tranquils, buy a wand, buy a bracer, and run it in for your team with vengeful spirit. And of course you can swap people as well. Just swap people out of position, yeet out a stun, tank a bunch of spells, and you've done your job. I'm actually not kidding. I'm really not. Just swap someone in and cast your spells and with two bracers and a wand, the enemy team basically can't go on you. If they do, they have to commit actually quite a lot to kill you. And that's the scary thing about an item build like this, and why I think Puppy goes this on a lot of heroes. And finally, I promise I'm going to wrap it up here. <laughs> I promise, I promise. Uh, but the, the last thing he's going to do is actually run at the Pango and then run at the Darkseer. So 
In order to close out Dota games, the best thing you can do is run people off their farming patterns. You don't have to kill them, right? So they run the Pango away here. That's fine. That's all they have to do. It's going to prevent them from getting to his Bracer, level 7, and obviously higher levels in the future. It matters, right? It matters quite a lot. It's good. So when you're ahead and you're a support, and you have three farming cores who are going to take lanes, what you can do is just kind of run at people. If they go on you, it's not the end of the world. You die, you respawn five seconds later. It doesn't matter, right? But if they don't go on you, you simply kick people off their farming pattern and you close down the map. And that's what we see here. Puppy instantly TP's bottom. He says, go on Seb, right? Gonna make a play onto him, track him down. Doesn't fear dying whatsoever because he understands that Seb is alone. Sets up for a kill, shuts down even more farming patterns and closes down the map. And this is how you win games as effectively as Secret. Well, there's like a million things. I'm sure if I could explain it to you, I would be on Team Secret. But nonetheless, it's been a pleasure teaching you guys Dota 2. If you want to see more content in the future, please like and subscribe. And I'll see ya. Pop up. Peace. Before you leave, just want to say a quick message. If you're trying to get better at Dota or you just enjoyed that video, uh, I know this is pretty general and you're going to hear this quite a bit from me. But I recommend you sign up to GameLink.com. Why? Because I put a lot of effort into the content over there. And generally the effort I do there is different from the content you're going to see here on YouTube. It is different. In fact, I usually go a lot more in depth on topics or into niche topics that help you get to the next level even faster. Because on YouTube, I, I often have to keep it more mainstream. And that's even why I'm putting it at the end of this YouTube video. That's why this is at the end, because a lot of people just watch five minutes, they skip through just for like the dopamine spike. But if you are interested in actually getting better at Dota, I recommend you go to the description down below, get your discount right now by clicking the link, sign up, use the discount code that you're going to see there. And I hope to see you there right now. So click it. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.